All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Friday and welcome to our Friday legal case management jam session here at uh, Confido Legal. Uh, my name is uh, Emery Wager. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Confido Legal. We're an embedded uh, payments platform specifically designed for law firms and for legal technology companies to embed payments into their applications. So because we're working with so many different legal case management solutions, uh, we see a lot of systems and are very passionate about helping firms find the right fit system. So super excited today to be talking to Casita Simpson again. Welcome back. And in many ways, this is going to be kind of a part two to our conversation uh, a few weeks ago. So Casita is the founder CEO of Simpson Associates, and she and her team have helped dozens of law firms set up their legal case management solutions, CRM solutions, intake solutions. So she's definitely an expert in legal tech and expert in uh, our topic for today. So as I said, it's kind of part two to our conversation from a few weeks ago where we talked about, you know, what are the signs that you need to upgrade your uh, case management solution? And one of the, my big takeaways from that, from Casita was that communication, both, both internal team internal and external with you know with clients that was the number one sign that it might be time to kind of upgrade your technology infrastructure so <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about communication we're going to talk primarily about client communication but we'll also touch on kind of team internal communication as well what should you expect to get in terms of communication improvements from your legal case management software and how do you get those uh, improvements so exciting topic today it's very high stakes and we'll talk about some of the reasons behind that in a little bit but i will stop talking and turn it over to casita for those who weren't with us last week or aren't uh, familiar with casita's work why don't give us a little intro on yourself and tell us a little bit about your relationship to this topic Okay. Uh, well, hi, everyone. My name is Casita Simpson. I am the proud owner of Simpson & Associates, like Emery said. Simpson & Associates prides itself on being able to offer CRM support and strategy and implementation to law firms nationwide. I believe that I have such a close relationship to this because of the years that I've spent involved with law firms and corporate organizations, as well as being a business owner and working closely with law firms for the past four years closely. But globally, I would say that I've been in the industry for like 15 years. And throughout my 15 year experience, one of the main things that I have always, always noticed is that client communication is just one of those things that we are always having to keep on topic. It always has to be the topic of conversation because law firms thrive with clients. No clients, no law firm. And so communicating with them and just providing them with answers is really one of the key ways to turn someone that's like irate and upset into someone who's singing your praises. I've been involved in CS calls. I've been pull it, pulled in on CS issues many times where the person on the other end is just screaming and very upset. And it could be about a bill. It could be about the status of their case. It could be about being confused about the status of their case. And it really all it boils down to is them wanting to be heard and knowing that they're not being gypped by the attorney mm -hmm. that they have to support them on their issue. And I would say you talked about stakes. The stakes are very, 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 very high because like no client, no firm. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> we were looking into some data on this prior to going live and mm -hmm. we found that the, you know, and just in terms of like number, sheer volume of bar complaints, communication was at the top of that list. So it is, yeah, I mean, it's the number one reason clients get, get pissed off enough to complain. And we also, <clears throat> we chatted with a partner of ours, 360 Rec Reviews, and they help law firms battle against negative reviews. And we looked at some of the negative reviews that they've helped uh, firms or are helping firms combat. And a lot of those stem from communication issues. Yeah. You know, some are probably 
unfair and in- inaccurate. Mm-hmm. But maybe if you know if you really take the side of the reviewer, communication could have potentially made a difference there. So super, mm-hmm. super high stakes. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I can honestly say that, especially when it comes to the reviews, it really just doesn't take much. Now, you're not going to please everybody. Like that's just not going to happen. And honestly, if you're working with a client and you're not pleasing them, then it's best to part ways before it gets to the review phase. But really, I'm telling you, I had a situation where this guy was on the phone and he kept asking for the attorney and the attorney just wasn't available. She was in trial. She couldn't take the call. She literally couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to someone on the team, like, you know, have the conversation with the client. Mm -hmm. And I said, just put the caller on hold, just put the client on hold for a moment. And I asked the person to give me a rundown of what was going on. And then I took over the call Mm -hmm. and I started the call by saying, by listening and then just saying, I I completely understand where you're coming from. And it just so happens that I was in a meeting just recently with the attorney talking about your case and the update that you need is X, Y, and Z. And in addition Mm -hmm. to that, we're working on X, Y, and Z. I'm actually, I have your file in front of me and I'm working on whatever Mm -hmm. it is. And before the call ended, I said, you know, as I mentioned before, the Mm -hmm. attorney's in trial, but I want to make sure that, you know, you you did get the updates from me and I understand that you want to speak with the attorney. Let's go ahead and get you scheduled for time, Mm -hmm. uninterrupted time where you can just have 10 to 15 minutes to be able to speak with the attorney. And I made a world of a difference. Mm -hmm. One, I didn't say that I had no idea about what was going on in their case. I did. Two, (laughs) I was making it very clear that I was working on something on their case in that moment. And three, I gave them the ability to have contact with the attorney when the opportunity presented itself. Yeah. They wrote a review. It was very positive. Very positive. Oh, that's great. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you were able to look up all the details that you needed there in the system that the and the case management system, system. yes, which (laughs) brings me to like not to even like interject. I know you want to say something, but like if you have a case management system, please, please put the notes in there. It makes a difference if you're Mm -hmm. having people to support you. Please put notes in there because at the end of the day, if you went to a trial or you went to a hearing or you just got off a client call, the information is important for the team to know because in the event that the person reaches out again, they don't have to connect you with the client. You could be doing something completely different and you've now empowered your team to take over that call and allow you the breathing room to prepare for whatever you need to prepare for, to handle the bigger issues involved in a case and not dealing with client communications. And if you don't have a team, still put it in a system because there are ways that you can make sure that your CRM system is sending out different communications, giving status updates, depending on your practice area. So I highly suggest it. If you're not doing that, make sure that if you don't take anything else from this session, please take away that updating your systems periodically is important. I mean, you have systems out there that if you send an email, literally an email, the the CRM has that email inside of that matter file. It's very easy. I mean, I literally was on a conversation with um, Cosmo Lex recently, and that's one thing that they pride themselves on between calls and emails and you name it, they're able to capture all of that inside of the matter file. Why not? It, It It's like, and I get it. I get the the struggle with technology. I understand it. You know, it's, it's like, it's, should we do it? Should we not do it? But legal and tech should definitely be working together. And your system that you're spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per year on should be there to support you along the way. Yeah. No, <clears throat> it makes sense. And you, you mentioned some really key kind of features that if you don't have them might be signs. If you don't have them, and like we talked about last time, you're starting to see signs of communication breakdown. Those are things that maybe you should look for in a new system. I think what I heard is like email, well, basically just a database, making sure you have a database of all your cases, a place to put stuff, even if that's a very simple, you know, solution, Mm -hmm. the ability to kind of log communications automatically, Mm -hmm. the ability to take notes on that case. What are some of the other things that a firm should expect 
to have or should start look, looking for in terms of just kind of features of their new case management system, if they're identifying these signs of kind of communication breakdown and they're thinking that technology, you know, will be changing the technology will be the next step. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think that it really is just going to come down to the firm and their practice area. But I would say that if it's something involving intellectual property, for example, and it's very intuitive for you to know what, what the status is, you know, and you can relatively get that over to the client quickly, a client portal would be helpful because that way you have the ability to send messages to the client and they're able to see the updates within the portal and Taking it a step further, it wouldn't even only be intellectual property. It really could be any practice area because if you just got done with the hearing and you just wanted to send a quick note to the client to let them know the status of the hearing and maybe the hearing uh, resulted in a, a replenishment of a retainer of some sort, you can give the update, but then also on the portal, send the invoice to them, letting them know like, hey, you know, this hearing resulted in excess of hours and let's go ahead and make sure that we receive payment on it. And you can do both of them simultaneously through a CRM utilizing the client portal. So I would say that if one of your main goals is to make sure that you have a dedicated place where your team or even yourself can collaborate and correspond with clients, then yes, a client portal would be great. It'd be a great feature. And, you know, one of the things that I... Thinking about it a little bit more, I was in a consult recently, and one of the big um, apprehensions that the attorney had with using the client portal was they were very concerned about like all of the client files, even things that were in draft being exposed to the client. And that's not the mm -hmm. case. The beautiful thing about some of these CRMs that have client portals is you have the ability to pick and choose which files and which documents and which sets of information you want the client to have access to. So just because you give them access to a client portal doesn't mean that they're going to have access to your entire database. That's not true. It's customizable. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else that you would say? Um, and while I, I've sprung that question on you, I'll just say, you know, a big thing that we think about a lot is billing communication. How do you deliver, you know, maybe an invoice or a request for a retainer deposit to the client? Because I think that's sometimes an overlooked but very important piece of the client communication is, you know, what is the cost of all this? Mm -hmm. uh, and so making sure that you have in place a, a system that will clearly deliver if you're using, say, like an evergreen retainer model, here's what's in your account. Here's what's kind of used up. And so we're requesting, you know, a replenishment here. That can be relatively confusing for a client. So having a good way to, you know, communicate that and give them like a meaningful update mm -hmm. instead of just, you know, there's a great quote I love from a partner of ours team at Your Core Solution. They help law firms with their accounting and finance. And Chelsea Williams is the founder there. And she says, you know, don't be a bill. <laughs> Let the bill be the only communication mm -hmm. that, that you deliver. And when you do deliver the bill, take advantage of that moment to mm -hmm. really, you know, give them an update on the mm -hmm. case. So I can't take credit for that, but I'll just add to the list of features, a good way to deliver uh, real value as you deliver the, the bill. So yeah. Anything, any other uh, kind of features that a firm should should look for in terms of improved communication in their software? Mm. I would say that it would be helpful. I think I'll do this though. So, you know, we're talking about emails, right? And we know that we can send emails through our, our inboxes and, you know, whatever way that we want, but like a CRM that allows us to send out like, those emails or maybe even stage those mm -hmm. emails and have the, the, like those status updates, like they can be triggered. They can be set up mm -hmm. as like automation. So that way, when it gets to a certain stage, you can automatically send out that communication. So mm -hmm. just ensuring that you are aware that those things are accessible to you and available to you. So I understand for the busy attorney, you know, maybe it's not feasible for them to update their client all the time like that. Maybe mm -hmm. they are not in a position to hire support to be able to have them be responsible for that. But at the very least, you know, having 
a way to make sure that you're internally set up in your CRM so that like, let's say, for example, you put a tag on a particular matter and you're saying that this tag is going to mean that once this tag goes on, hearing has passed and now we're we're moving into another phase. Or let's say, for example, trademark application. We just submitted the trademark application, like putting it to trademark application submitted in like a pipeline stage mm-hmm. that trigger an automatic email going out. Mm-hmm. If you set the system up, it will work for you. And so I'm not here to say that stop all your work and make sure you communicate with your clients. I'm here to say that allow the technology to also be a supplement. So I wouldn't even say that these are features they should look out for. I think that these are features that they should definitely make sure that they're aware of. And if they're not mm-hmm implementing some of these things, definitely start implementing them. I had a client Mm -hmm. just recently, I delivered a CRM rebuild to them. Uh, I implemented a lot of things inside of um, HubSpot and got that to sync over to Clio. And Mm -hmm. one of the conversations we had that was life-changing for her and the firm was the fact that we made the engagement letters electronic Mm -hmm. because the support people that they had wasn't prioritizing that. And Mm -hmm. to me, for me, it's like engagement letters, retainer agreements, business representation letters, that means dollars for the firm. I want to do that first. Mm -hmm. I want to have that be the first thing that I do and also send that invoice out. Like, but that's how I think. And I realize that, you know, every legal professional, they think differently. And that's amazing. That's why there's Mm -hmm. so many of us. But utilizing your system and knowing that you're the busy on the go attorney and you do not have the space to hire people, set your engagement letters to be electronic. Make that be mm-hmm. something that you do. If your system is capable to then send invoices out like and have them be together, HubSpot does that. Like you can have the engagement letter and then have them sign. And then there's a whole piece where if you put in the amount that they're supposed to be paying in the deal, when they receive the engagement letter right after they sign, they're brought to a screen where they pay. But that's not the only system that does it. You know, I recently, one of my clients recently implemented utilizing Fadu in a certain kind of way. And I know that Mm -hmm. you're really close with Kimberly Benner regarding that, but they also have a way for you to be able to get the information from the client, like a very one, two, three question thing Mm -hmm. and have payment be sent out. And that information from the one, two, three questions are now put into your engagement letter or your contract and they're signing it and you're moving them right into being a paid matter. It's very, very easy. Yes, it does require some work on your part in the beginning, but once you do it one time or hire a company like me to do Mm -hmm. it one time, it then takes care of itself and it's game changer. We're talking about spending unnecessary time, which costs money doing these administrative functions that can just be automated. So I know I've kind of like, start change the question into a different direction but really i think it's awareness of what these systems are capable of not yeah. necessarily like what to look out for because mm-hmm. the beautiful yeah. thing is that all of these systems kind of like focus on certain components so identify what's of most importance to you and mm-hmm. find a way to get make sure that your system if you don't have one already is going to match what's important to you And I can Mm -hmm. even say that if you don't know, then consult with somebody. There's many of companies out there, not only mine, that are out there that you can partner with to help you navigate which way to go. I mean, the resources are all out there to be able to do that. And I think that's something that should be looked into for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So I kind of pulled out five main things, opportunities potentially Mm -hmm. potentially in in Mm -hmm. improving communication with new software. One is just having notes Two is kind of automated communication logging. So if you're sending emails or text messages, making sure those get logged to the case. Wait, phone calls too. We can log phone calls and phone calls. (laughs) We can definitely, and that ends up being important to some extent, phone calls too. Mm -hmm. Log that. Perfect. And then number three would be a a portal, which I I do want to dive into that a little bit after this. I have a follow-up question on that. Okay. Uh, clear build delivery and adding value in that build delivery process. And then I love that last one, you know, automating communications where possible. So mm-hmm. that can be uh, done. I know there's also great systems out there like Locus that have kind of a no code 
automation a system, same with uh, Lawmatics, where you can do that on the larger firm side. Mm-hmm. Built on Salesforce, there's Litify, where, you know, kind of the, the automation possibilities are, are, are pretty endless yeah. there. So if, you know, like you said, if that's the right fit, that no code automation is, is out there. Mm-hmm. So perfect. I, I, so let's circle back to the, the portal, because I think when people are a lot of times when when firms are thinking, oh, I need, you know, communication is an issue. We need it. We need a portal. <laughs> but as you know, coming from the legal consumers perspective, the client's perspective, there might be situations where I want to log in to view stuff for my law firm, but I'm not sure I want to do that in every case as the client. So maybe you can talk a little bit about when is the right time for a portal versus maybe just pushing that communication or, or something like that, not knocking it. I'm just saying like, yeah, you know, maybe that's not the only solution here. Yeah. I, and I, I do agree, which I, I highlighted a little bit before, not every practice area is going to need something like this. What I have found is when it comes to my experience, family law, there's a lot of different things going on there. And so like, family law is so personal, right? Like it's emotional, right? So it's almost necessary to have a client portal because things are ever changing and ever moving, you know, depending on what it is, if we're talking about paternity, if we're talking about divorce, if we're talking about alimony or stuff involving children, anything involving a child makes it 10 times more emotional, right? So in that instance, I definitely think that a client portal would be paramount. It's very, very important because you in the world of that practice area are on the go. You're busy. I've seen it. I know it. I know how crazy the attorney is with being so busy. And so you don't have that time to update the clients giving them the ability and empowering them to go and look to see what the status is. And I would even take it a step further, schedule a call if they have a question inside Mm -hmm. of the client portal is Mm -hmm. important because Mm -hmm. that way you're not, it's not being hands off and we're not talking about, Hey, give me money. We're saying, Hey, this is an update. And Mm -hmm. maybe even taking a moment and saying that there's nothing for concern. There's no, nothing alarming. I just wanted to give you an update. We're, we're in good shape. If mm-hmm. you need to speak with me, use this link to schedule 15 to 20 minutes to speak with me. Yeah. That practice area, I've seen it. Now, if you are an intellectual property firm and you work with small volume brands that don't have an extensive portfolio, I don't recommend the client portal. If you're doing one trademark and you're doing one uh, copyright application and maybe it's like one copyright application, but there's a lot of like content in it still, I don't really see it as being that necessary. Just push out an email to them or have it automated or have it done some other kind of way. You don't necessarily need a client portal, in my opinion, for that because it's it's a one-on-one type of situation. Now, if you're one of those firms and you are, you know, you have a high volume of brands that have extensive types of collateral, let's say one of your clients is Pepsi or maybe Coca-Cola or maybe Virgin Voyages, you know, or, Mm -hmm. you know, any of the other big companies out there, then yes, it makes sense to have a client portal because, you can have the, all of the different applications that you've done, or maybe just have a full list of all the different trademarks and the statuses of them, where instead of calling up the, the, the company and speaking to your direct contact, instead of doing that, you're able to empower them to have access to all that in the system. And they can download mm-hmm. it at their leisure and do whatever they need to do with it. And even something like knowing which ones are registered that they can use the R on and which ones are only, you know, in processes, so they would need to use the TM on it for trademarks, you know, copyright, the status of the copyright, what has been copyrighted, it, larger volumes of collateral, a, a bigger portfolio would require it. I would say that in and not to get now, not to even get more specific with other practitioners, but just generalizing it. If your firm 
is a firm that has a lot of communications that would need to be sent at different stages, then, you know, I would definitely empower you to use the client portal, but you would know best. You would know when it's time based on some of the things that I've said, if any of this resonates with you, then you know that it's, it's time to look into a system that has a client portal or come up with some kind of solution to make sure that you're staying on top of client communication. You know what your clients need, you know who you're servicing. And so if it's something where I've even had it where the practice area itself doesn't necessarily require it, but maybe you have a couple of needy clients and you just mm -hmm. don't have the time to be able to handhold the needy clients in this moment, use the client portal. That mm -hmm. will, And it won't cure everything. Like I'm not saying that this is going to be like the cure, have all be all, but it helps. Mm -hmm. It helps, especially if you're busy and sometimes attorneys just have an influx of cases at a period of time where they're having to deal with that and they don't have the time to be as hands on as they once were. Mm -hmm. And probably at that point, you probably should even be looking into hiring some support as well. Yeah. I mean, if you're that busy, but yeah. Mm -hmm. but to circle back to something that you said about communications not only being about the bill, another thing that came to mind that came up in conversation when I was consulting with someone recently was birthdays. You collect the client's birthday for pre pretty much every practice area. So sending them a happy birthday message, having a template in your system that sends like email to them at some point when it's their birthday that changes everything. Yeah. Like, you thought of me, you remembered me, you know, it just makes you feel good. And we're here to make the client feel good. So they open their wallets and say, y'all. <laughs> and probably a great, great way after the, the case is closed to continue, to have an excuse to kind of continue communication right. as well. So, right. And I've seen that. I, and not only in the law industry, I, I had a dentist that I, he's not my dentist anymore, but I still receive communications. When it's <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know, I probably should go back to him and get my teeth. But it's all like, it all works. It works. <laughs> like, I can't unsubscribe from this. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, awesome. Awesome. So, okay. So we, I think we, we talked a little bit about some of the potential opportunities. <clears throat> Let's say you know, you're the firm, you've decided to upgrade, you've decided which of those five or so kind of features you're, you want to really lay into and emphasize and, and um, use as your communication channels. <clears throat> what can a firm do to make sure that they get that value that, you know, they've sort of promised themselves or been promised by the, you know, case management software? I, one thing that you said earlier was make sure those notes go in, have a policy around, you know, you've got a great way to log those notes, but you got to do it. What are some other things a, a firm should be thinking about in order to make sure that they get, you know, they actually do improve the communication now that they have some of these features? I think that that's a two-part question. So one, if they don't know who their clients are, then you know, have a uh, feedback done, have a survey done, have reviews done so that you can get a general consensus of like what types of things the client would need to be updated or made aware of and ensuring that you develop SOPs around that. Like really and truly when you're looking into acquiring a CRM or even improving a CRM, if and we're only keeping focused on client communication, right? So when mm -hmm. you know that you're struggling in a particular area, make that be the focal point and have a SOP so that it's no longer an issue and then start working on building the system from there. So start with what you want the process to be. What do you want to happen? One of the very first things that I ask every single client that I'm consulting with, what is your ideal client journey? What are you looking for? Because that kind of gives us a basis of figuring out, like, do you need to just create email templates and have that be triggered by stages? Do you need a client portal? Do you need to have someone that's answering the phones that's aware of the issue? Like, what exactly do you need? And you, don't, you won't really know what you need until you take the moment to reflect on what it is. And every... There, 
law firms go through stages. You know, there's you start at the beginning and you're probably by yourself or maybe you're lucky and you have a partner, but you guys are both like doing a lot of the grunt work. That's going to be a different kind of setup than someone who has a full team. The mm-hmm. notes are definitely going to be super important by that point. So it's mm-hmm. like identifying where you are in the stage and ensuring that if we're talking about someone uh, or a client that needs, you know, day-to-day realistic type of updates, then you want to use the client portal. If we're talking about, you know, just staging things and making sure that you're solo and you're supported, then we're talking about automation heavy and workflows and email templates and building out those things. And it's just a matter of where are you in the stage? But I really, I really, really, really do strongly believe that having your standard operating procedures in order, having a clear guide as to what happens in your firm once the lead becomes a client is very mm-hmm. important. Like, yeah. And I would even stress to say that while you're consulting with the lead, with the prospective client, Find out at that moment what they're expecting. Set the expectations from there. Find out what they're expecting from you as their attorney. And if it's something where they're like, hey, I need this and that, then you could even say, okay, well, I'm going to give you access to a client portal. That's where a lot of your communications are going to be. Please make sure that you're checking your client portal because that's where the updates are going to be. Keep stressing and emphasizing that while Mm -hmm. you're in the consult so that once you start working with them, They know where to go to receive the updates from you. Setting Mm -hmm. the right expectation from the beginning is huge. It's setting the right expectation externally with the client and then internally ensuring that you have the standard operating procedures like in place to be able to support what you're trying to do. And remember that as you're growing, these things change along the way. And if you're Mm -hmm. thinking of making a switch, communicate that to your client immediately. So that way you're not dealing with the headache of, this person's calling, this person's calling. You're, and if you have a virtual receptionist, you're paying for those dollars for that person to be on the phone and making those same calls. Like we're talking about a matter of saving time and money here. Like mm-hmm. I'm not stressing this because I want you to spend money. It will save you time and it will definitely save you dollars. Mm-hmm. You can probably not- take the vacation you want to take by, by implementing some of these things because you'll have the dollars to take that vacation and you'll have a system capable of doing certain things. So you can take the vacation. It's a no brainer. Okay. <laughs> I'm sensing a, 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 another topic uh, maybe we can do in a few weeks, which yeah. is, you know, how to set those SOPs and, and actually execute on them in your system. So yes, maybe stay tuned for, for, for that. I know Casita yeah. and I will definitely chat again. So. <laughs> We are a little kind of over time. So I guess just to any kind of final thoughts or anything that you would want to add to see to this conversation. Yeah, I, we spent so much time talking about the client journey and what that looks like, but leads are important too. Mm-hmm. Um, I, after working with a couple of firms, I, they've I've seen them leave money on the table by not following up with the lead. And yeah. if you're busy where you can't follow up with the lead, then if you have a virtual receptionist, maybe having that, educating them on doing the callbacks so that you can, you know, possibly retain more business that way. But one other thing that you can possibly even do too is setting up a lead nurturing sequence inside of your CRM. So that Mm -hmm. way you're able to bring in people that way. I would say that, you know, even the business that's thriving, even the firm that's thriving, it doesn't hurt to have more coming in. So don't leave money on the table. Mm-hmm. That probably would be another part that we talk yeah. about. Yeah, all right. Just yeah. Plug it. Plug it. <laughs> in the parking lot for the future. <laughs> yeah. Love it, love it. <laughs> awesome. Well, as we kind of wrap up, I want to give uh, one plug to our legal case management software hub. So it's .com slash LCM for legal case management. Uh, and I'll drop the link in the in the comments. But one of the things that you can do there is search different systems and see kind of some of the features that they have related to communication. And then we also have kind of a quick consult form that you can fill out there. And one of the kind of, well, one of the the categories there is communication. And you can kind of say that you want systems with certain communication related features. So, and then we'll get to work looking for the right system for you. And of course, if you don't want to DIY and, and go it alone. There are, are definitely options out there. And maybe, Casita, you could talk just as we close a little bit about kind of how you help in this area. Yeah. So I really and truly 
think is super duper important to make sure that you're phasing yourself properly and phasing the firm properly as you're growing. And so a DIY system works very well. You know, you, you have, you're able to piece things together, but when you're really looking at transitioning, it's really important to make sure that you remember some of those pain points that made you transition to this robust system in the first place and don't get lost in the sauce. Like, because there's a lot of serums that offer a lot of bells and whistles, but really keeping focus on the things that caused you to transition in the first place should still remain true. So if you decided to transition to a robust system because you needed something that allowed you to track your time and be able to build time realistically, then have that still be the focus when you're looking at graduating to something new uh, where everything is in one place, where you can track your time, you know, create invoices and send out the bills all in one place. You don't lose sight of that. And if you're one of those people that has all your contacts, maybe inside of an Excel sheet or something like that, remembering that by going to a robust system, you have all your contacts and your leads all centered in one place. So not to go back to, please definitely, if you haven't watched the DIY to complete solution video, definitely go ahead and check it out. But just to like tie it up with a bow, just remember what you came for. Remember why you're switching. Don't get so hung up on, all the extra things because it's easy to do that there's so many options out there that it's so easy to just like get lost and like oh i could do this and this but you now you're spending more money and did you really get what you wanted when you were thinking of transitioning in the per first place mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah Awesome. Awesome. Well, and, and if you are looking for some external help, Casita will, yes. uh, I know she'll definitely help you. Yes. I forgot to shameless plug. I will shameless yeah. plug now. If you are looking. I, I set you up for the shameless <laughs> plug and you were so nice not to take it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. If you're looking for consulting on trying to figure out what to do with your systems, definitely reach out to us, simpson-assoc.com, and we will definitely support you. I also conduct system audits. So if we're looking at saving time, saving money, and phasing out programs that are already a part of your CRM, please reach out to us. If you're struggling with trying to figure out custom fields and how to make your document generate the way that you need to, or you're struggling with document assembly, reach out to us. We're here to support you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining today. We, we're going to do some light editing on this and it will be up on our legal case management hub that I, I linked to there. Um, you can also find our Casita and, and my previous conversation there about upgrading from DIY systems. And then uh, Casita also has a YouTube uh, channel with a ton of really great content about <clears throat> different technology that firms can use to kind of upgrade. I their really business. failed at this shameless plugging situation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing uh, so yeah, I do have a YouTube channel that centers around helping people redevelop their systems and just implement certain things. Some of the videos on there cover Locus. There'll be some more videos on Lawmatics, Cosmo, Lex, my case. So stay tuned. The channel is CAS, C-A-S, Loves Tech. That's CAS Loves Tech. So check us out on YouTube as well. Awesome. awesome <laughs> we're on awesome. all the other social channels too. Yeah. We're, on, we're on Instagram. <laughs> we're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the whole nine. So And LinkedIn. So find us. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we're both done with our shameless plugs. Now. <laughs> and everyone, a great, great Friday, great weekend. And you can bet Casita and I will be back chatting here in a couple of weeks. So, all right. Thanks, everyone.